Namaste. So it's evening time, sunset, and this is called Sandhya. It means the meeting, the border, the joining of day and night, and also in the morning around dawn. And this is the best time to worship the goddess. So Sandhya, there's actually four Sandhyas, sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight. And depending on the type of rite, the type of ritual, there are different appropriate times. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that just yet. First, we have to discuss the cosmogony, or the creation of the universe, as described in Lakshmi Tantra. Because this gives the background, the context, for understanding everything else. So rather than me try to explain it, <laughs> I'll let the goddess herself describe it. I am the eternal eyehood of all beings and am considered to be the creator of the universe in descending and ascending order. The supreme eyehood is known as the state of Turiya Tita, that is, transcendent absolute Brahman, the absolute state of existence and the joint existence of Lakshmi and Narayana. There is no dualism in us since we exist unitedly as the existential principle and its state of existence. When activity stirs up in that state, as in the ocean when the moon rises, I, the Shakti of Narayana, am then characterized by the creative urge, and that is my Turiya state, coinciding with the beginning of my state of evolution. Therein, both the pure and the impure creation lie dormant. So she is the eyehood. What does eyehood mean? It means egoity. Now, egoity is different from egotism. Egotism is false. It's fabricated. It's unreal. It only exists as a thought. It's just software. <laughs> it's not remotely tangible or actual. But I-hood, egoity, is the fundamental reality of everything. See, there's a difference between the ego of God and our ego. <laughs> the ego of God is absolute reality. And our egos are absolute nonsense, <laughs> illusion, maya, that which seems to exist but actually does not. So when she comes into manifestation by the desire of the absolute to become many, this is described in the Upanishads, that Brahman says, I am one, let me become many. And because of this desire, this is called Icha Shakti. Icha Shakti means the desire or the will to create. Then she comes into existence as the Mahatattva. The Mahatattva is the sum total of all material existence, including material consciousness. And this is known as Turiya. In Turiya Tita, there is no duality. But Turiya, there is duality, but that duality is quiescent. It's calm. She makes the uh, metaphor like the ocean. But then the moon rises and the waves come up in the ocean. Huh? Anyone can see this. So this is the state of Turiya Tita where there is the recognition, I exist in the absolute. This is before the creation of the jivas. The jivas are who we are, what we are. So then, 
There is another set of categories in both the pure and impure stages of the creative evolution that is also pervaded by me, consisting of the cognizer, the medium of cognition, and the object of cognition. The medium of cognition is divided into two, classified as external and internal. When these cognizers realize their identity with God, this is the Turiatita state. Bearing in mind that these two phases, my descent and ascension, are parts of one process, a person fixing his mind solely on me and dedicating his entire life to me ultimately achieves union with me. So this is the purpose of the creation. See, when she creates, this is called the descending evolution. And when she destroys the universe, this is called the ascending involution. And these are the two phases, but they're one. Now, when the cosmos is manifest, there's a distinction between the experiencer, the experienced object, and the experience itself. As she calls it here, the cognizer, the cognized, and the cognition. So this is the fundamental, not duality, but triplicity, the triple, the ontological basis of all existence. In other words, to have existence, you have to have a cognizer, a subject, a cognized, an object, and a cognition. And that cognition can be through a medium of senses, either internal or external. The external senses belong to the body, and the internal cognition belongs to the mind. So these are all the categories, you see? This is ontology. How can we understand the universe unless we have a set of categories for everything that exists or can exist? And this is ontology. And the creation of an ontology is how we create the context to understand the meaning of existence. O King of Heaven, I am beyond the limitations of time or place. In fact, these upadis, limiting factors, are pervaded by me. With myself as the substratum, I voluntarily evolve this entire universe. Thus, I have briefly revealed to you the different aspects of my presence as the received and the receiving. And this is how I evolve as the definable, vacha, the material creation, literally, that which is spoken. So this is the principle of creation of the universe, vacha. The universe is spoken into existence by the Supreme. And there's a huge literature of tantras spoken by Shiva to Shakti. And here, this tantra is spoken by Shakti herself to Indra, the king of heaven. So in these tantras, the word, uh, the very word of power that creates the universe is revealed. And we'll get into the subtle distinctions between the different stages of speech that create the whole reality. Now listen attentively to my defining aspect as vachaka, knowledge, literally that which is spoken of. Consisting of pure knowledge, I first evolve into prana, kundalini, then, through specific stages, I evolve into subsequent states known as Shanta, Sukshma, Madhya, and Vaikari. As Shanta, manifesting the Chaturvyuha, the four forms of Vishnu, and the objects of knowledge of the Chaturvyuha, I evolve further into the subtle state. In the subtle state, I remain in the dual form of Shakti and Nada, Shabda Brahman, subtle sound. So it's very interesting that scientists, <laughs> poor scientists, they're so confused. They theorize that 
the entire universe is created by a gigantic sound vibration. What a coincidence. <laughs> because actually, just like if you have a drum head and you put some sand on it, and then you have a speaker and you make different sounds, the drum head will resonate with the sound and it will arrange the sand into geometric patterns. In the same way, if you have a medium such as the intergalactic gas, and then you have a sound of creation, then that will arrange that material into patterns. And this is how the creation takes place on a huge scale, mind-bogglingly, uh, actually inconceivable scale. So she at first is the vachya, the sound of that creation. And then she becomes the vachaka, the objects of knowledge. And she also emanates the forms, the four forms of Vishnu known as the Chaturvyuha. And we'll get into all this in detail when we get into the chapters. And she becomes the object of knowledge for those forms. So in other words, she is the total manifestation. She is everything. She creates and destroys it by her creative word. Evolving from the subtle state, I arrive at the stage of Madhyama. That is the state of Bindu, in which the totality of all sounds is latent. I am that state of all sounds, Madhya. From there, I evolve into the state of Vaikari. This is the state in which sounds are differentiated, manifest themselves, and are divided into groups of vowels, consonants, and so on the matrika. He who is versed in the knowledge of Shabda Brahman and bears in mind my two states of descent and ascension, creation and dissolution, enters the state of one who is beyond the reach of sound. This is the silence of Brahman. This is the ultimate state. You see, the speech that creates the world begins in a subtle form. So subtle that there's no differentiation between different words or letters or sounds. It's simply a creative urge. But in the Madhyam state, it starts to become differentiated. And this is called Bindu. And we discussed Bindu in the series on the Matrika because this is exactly the point at which the subtle speech starts to become differentiated into vowels, consonants, and other sounds. The structure of sentences, the grammar, uh, the syntax of language, and so on. All this comes from the uh, bindu. And then in Vaikari, the sounds are made manifest. They become actual words and sentences with specific meanings. And this, all of this is called Shabda Brahman. Shabda means sound. And of course, Brahman means the absolute. So the absolute has sound when it comes into manifestation. And this sound is the force that drives the entire creation of the universe. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.